after the birth of the universe, the Big Bang, the universe should have annihilated. It should have completely destroyed itself. And it should have done so because of something called antimatter. And this antimatter is what I study. So almost everything we see around us is matter. And it's made of, of mainly protons, electrons, and neutrons. Antimatter is sort of the mirror image of matter. It has equal but opposite properties. So it means that there exists something called an antiproton, which has the same mass as the proton, but opposite charge. There is a symmetry between the two. Now let's talk about how you can get our hands on some of this antimatter. The person that tells us how to do that is Albert Einstein and his equation E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. It means that if a particle and its antiparticle meet, they'll annihilate it, turn into pure energy. But vice versa, if you have a lot of energy, you can create particle-antiparticle pairs. This is what we can do at CERN, but it's also what happened at the Big Bang. Now, the laws of physics tell us that particles and antiparticles must always be created in such pairs. So there must be equal amounts of matter and antimatter in the universe. The problem is, though, if we look out in the universe, we almost exclusively see matter. So the obvious question is, where is all the antimatter? If it's gone, if it's annihilated, then there wouldn't be any universe left at all. So our mere existence indicates that there must be some asymmetry between matter and antimatter. At our experiment at CERN called Alpha, we're looking for this asymmetry. As the only experiment in the world, we can create and trap anti-atoms. And it's the simplest anti-atom you can imagine. It's anti-hydrogen. By shining on it with lasers, we can measure what's called its energy spectrum. An energy spectrum for an atom is like a fingerprint for a human. It's unique. So we have compared our measurements with the measurements for normal hydrogen. But so far, we haven't found any difference. Our next goal is to measure whether antimatter falls downwards, like the objects we're used to, or if it maybe falls upwards. We actually don't know this. Hopefully, if we're successful with these experiments, we'll be able to answer the question, why do we exist? Thank you.